This footage was shot on red camera under tungsten lighting. I set it to red wide gamut RGB red log 3G10 in camera raw settings. This is the same clip, but cropped to the grayscale of the color checker. In the timeline nodes tree we have a Rec 709 LUT. This is what it looks like, without the LUT. First, let's adjust the white balance using temperature and tint controls in camera raw settings, to make sure this will fix the white balance across the entire dynamic range. Well, no wonder it works. This is what this shot looks like, with the corrected white balance. Now let's imagine this is not a raw footage. Let's try different methods from worst to best, and then see exactly what drawbacks each of them have. Temperature and tint controls. Okay, it doesn't work. Let's try another patch. Nope. Something closer to the mid-range? Better, but still unacceptable. Later in this video, I will explain why it doesn't work, and when this tool should be used. Lift Gamma Gain Trackballs. I'm trying to fix it with the balls as hard as I can, but as you can see, it's taking a long time and I still can't completely fix it. Printer lights. This tool is generally recommended when you're working with log footage, so we should try it. We easily fix the white balance in the midtones and highlights, but our shadows turn blue. Of course, we can fix it with our shadows trackball. Not bad but still not perfect. Chromatic Adaptation Plugin Let's set its primaries and transfer function to red wide gamut RGB red log 3G10, just as our source footage color space is. Now we can easily fix the white balance, and we even have some LMS color spaces to choose from. This is especially useful if you have a totally wrong white balance, or have a lot of strong neon lights and want to keep their colors. Before we try the fastest way to adjust the white balance, let me show you what exactly happens when we use all of these tools. Here is a generated linear ramp that looks like a straight line on a waveform analyzer if we disable our Rec. 709 lot. And as you can see, it has the wrong white balance. I also added some noise to make the lines on the analyzer colorful. Here is what happens when we use these temperature and tint controls with any log footage. Multiplication will never work right with any logarithmic curve, if we want it to adjust the white balance. This tool is only suitable for pure gamma 2.4 or 2.2 footage. But you never get it from any camera. So the only way to work in this color space is to use DaVinci YRGB Color Managed Color Management System and set timeline color space to gamma 2.4, any source footage will be converted to. Next, lift gamma gain trackballs. Looks close, but we're still far from a perfect result. Now let's see what we get using the offset. Again, we easily fix the white balance in the midtones and highlights, but our shadows turn blue. Offset is the addition operation, but it is not applied to a true logarithmic curve. Every log footage from any camera always has a so-called toe. That's why the shadows are affected more than necessary. It only works with ACES CC curve, which is a true logarithmic function. But ACES CC has its own drawbacks, like noticeable bright pixels in the shadows, so it's better, and recommended by Netflix, to use ACES CCT instead. Let's try Chromatic Adaptation Plugin again, just to see what actually happens when we use it. perfect again, and we still can't adjust it from our panel. But what does this plugin actually do? And what actually happens when you adjust the white balance in RAW? Well, in both cases white balance is a multiply operation, or gain, applied to red, green and blue values in a scene linear LMS color space. LMS is a color space which represents the response of the three types of cones of the human eye, named for their responsivity peaks at long, medium and short wavelengths. 
In short, it's the best color space to adjust the white balance in. In Chromatic Adaptation plugin, encoding curve is removed from the image, converting it into a scene linear color space. Then a 3 by 3 matrix is applied, to convert primaries to one of these LMS color spaces. After that, we can adjust the white balance using these controls, which are actually a multiply operation or RGB gain. Our image is then converted back, from scene linear LMS color space to whatever we've set here. The same thing happens in Camera Raw. But in reality, most of the time we can ignore LMS color spaces until we have a shot with strong neon lighting and want to keep its colors. Or until we get a footage with a totally wrong white balance. So let's focus on a grayscale matching only. What we need, is to make gain trackball work in a scene linear color space. Let's change our timeline color space to red wide gamut RGB log 3G10, as our source footage is. Of course, you should set it according to your source footage color space. If you got clips from multiple cameras, you can use DaVinci YRGB color managed, or to manually convert each clip to the timeline color space using color space transform plugin, which is what I prefer. Of course you can use any color space you're familiar with, instead of this one. Also, let's set the gamma of this node to linear. Our image is now converted from the timeline color space and gamma, to whatever we set here. Then, after all the corrections in this node, our image is converted back to our timeline color space. All the corrections in this node are now applied to the footage in a scene linear color space. This means we can use Gain Trackball to correctly and quickly adjust the white balance of any log footage. And since the black point always stays untouched, you can match your clips to each other using just this single control. But what about the exposure and even contrast? Here's what happens when we adjust the exposure and contrast using the offset and contrast controls. Blacks are easily crushed or raised. The same happens when we use the other wheels. But if we use gain wheel in a scene linear color space, we get a physically correct exposure change. And the gamma wheel can be our contrast tool, which also has a pinned black point. Whatever we do, our black point is untouched. And if we want to lift or tint our blacks as a creative decision, we can do it at the scene or timeline level. Now is a good time to promote my LUTs, so please check out the description.